What's going on guys, these are my first quick impressions on a phone that happens to have two screens, the LG V10. So here is what I've noticed straight out of the box. I received a Korean model. Now don't worry, it's still the same device as the American version. The only difference being that the Korean version has a lot of Korean bloatware and my AC adapter is incompatible with all my wall plugs here in the US. But that's my problem, not yours. So let's get right into the specs. So I like to call this phone the Frankenstein of phones, mainly because of its size. The phone is six inches tall and weighs at around 192 grams. I don't know about you, but that almost feels like carrying a brick around. But I kind of like it. It sort of brings that premium solid build into the palm of your hands. And the top reason for its weight is because of the stainless steel accents on the side of the phone. I'm not saying the entire build is made out of stainless steel because that would be sort of ridiculous. In fact, most of the build is still plastic, but the good thing is that when I hold the phone, I can barely feel the plastic components. It just feels great in the hand overall. Also, I don't want to forget to mention that this device has a fingerprint scanner on the back of the phone, which is also meant to be the same button used to unlock your device. This is a great move by LG as I can unlock my phone to see my lock screen first, and then I can unlock it with my fingerprint. Let's pay attention, Apple. And of course, you have the signature volume button, on the back of the phone as usual. In fact, this phone is meant to withstand force and drops because it can resist vibration and shock at each corner. Plus, with a Gorilla Glass 4 display, I feel pretty confident walking around with this device in my hand without a case. Especially because the rugged back is so grippy and unusual, it makes this addicting scratch sound too, which I can't stop doing. And when you're not scratching the back, you can remove the back cover and you will have a removable battery containing 3000 milliamp hours of battery life in it. And you'll have a slot for your micro SD card to expand the storage up to 200 gigabytes. Holy cow. Now, if you want to know what this phone will have the power, it's still a 2K display, 5.7 inches, and has a pixel density of 515 PPI with an IPS LCD display, giving you some bright colors, a sharp screen, and so far it looks really nice. It's still not as good and crispy as the Galaxy Note 5, the Nexus 6P, or maybe even the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, or the Active, but the difference is barely noticeable. Don't even worry about it, you'll be happy with the pixels on this phone no matter what. Not to mention it has a second screen. This screen is so anticipated that I guess LG wanted to bring something new to the table, and so they have. This display is always on even when your phone is locked, and it shows you your notifications, the time, the date, and the battery life, which seems to be pretty useful. And you can also slide to the right when it's off, so that way you can bring up some more toggles like the flashlight, maybe even the Wi-Fi, and so forth. But when your phone is on, you can have a custom signature. You can slide it to the right and maybe open a recent application you just used. You can enable app shortcuts, add music player controls, and just give you an easier way to navigate through your device without having to open maybe your notification tray, or your quick settings. Specs wise, this screen has a resolution of 1040 by 160, and it adds an extra 2.1 inches to your phone size, which explains why the phone is so tall. Was this feature worth it? I actually don't know yet. I'll let you guys know in my full review though. The back camera is very similar to the LG G4 released this year. The only thing they added is a dual LED flash, but you still have that 16 megapixels, an aperture size of f1.8, optical image stabilization, you can record in full 4K, and a laser autofocus so you can focus extremely fast. I had to give a big shout out to the LG camera application. It's really amazing. You can go into manual mode and change anything like you would on a DSLR camera. And I really enjoy the modes it comes with. Especially the slow-mo option, I got some pretty awesome shots with my friend at the park while testing out this camera. And on the front, you have two 5 megapixel front facing cameras. One of them allows you to shoot for a group selfie as a wider shot. And the other one is just a regular front facing camera 
So that way you can take a single selfie by yourself and post it on Instagram. So there you have different options for taking selfies now, which is pretty cool. Here are some great pictures I've taken. You can see the details of the pictures are great. Colors look fantastic, but I'll get into more detail with the camera in my full review because I want to see how it works in low light situations, fast paced events, and so forth. Now with all of these new improvements, we must have a great CPU, and it sort of does coming in with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 chip, a Hexacore ARM Cortex A57 and A53 64-bit processor, an Adreno 418, an amazing 4GB of RAM, so lag on this device is probably really impossible. And yeah, that's basically all the specs on this phone. So these are my first impressions of the LG V10. I'll be releasing my full review on this phone in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. If you want to stay up to date with the battery length, maybe some photos, or anything I've found problematic or awesome within this device, feel free to check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also, I will see you guys in the next video. Kapow!